Welcome everyone. Today's topic is lichen anatomy, the different structures that make up a lichen, from the key features that all lichens have to those that are identifying features for a particular species. Knowing basic lichen anatomy is essential for lichen identification at any level and should help you understand more about lichen function and lichen diversity as well. Knowing the parts of a lichen will give you the vocabulary you'll need for any further exploration with lichens, like my Meet the Lichen series. I'm going to focus on the most important terms to know. There's certainly many more that we won't cover. Most of the words are likely to be words that you haven't used or heard before, but you'll start to get comfortable with many of them and hopefully it will be enjoyable to learn the language of lichens. And in doing so, you'll be in the company of people like Henry David Thoreau, the famous naturalist who said, I find myself inspecting little granules as it were on bark of trees, little shields or apothecia springing from a thallus, such as the mood of my mind. I call it studying lichens. You too will soon be casually talking about apothecia, if not in such a poetic way as Thoreau. A brief note before we move on, most of these slides were originally created by Dr. Lolita Calabria and Dr. Jesse Miller, and have been used or modified with permission to accompany the narration by me, Dr. Ali Weil. All right, moving on. So this anatomy lecture is broken up into two parts, uh, since I know staring at slides on your computer for even more than 15 or 20 minutes at a time can be a lot. Uh, the first part is going to focus on the bigger picture anatomy, how to describe a lichen as a whole and the structure of different growth forms and some of the internal anatomy. Um, and some of it could be a review if you've had some kind of intro to lichens before um, or if you're in my class and this is the, the second lecture you're in. Um, and then the second part in the second video will focus on the stuff that's sort of attached to the lichen's body. Uh, so the most important of those are going to be the reproductive structures. So we'll also talk a little bit about lichen reproduction. Um, and then there will be a few that are uh, just other structures that are useful for identification. So here we go. All right, the first term to know is thallus. That is with a th. Uh, thallus refers to the whole body of the lichen except for its reproductive parts. And unlike many fungi where most of its body is just filaments under the ground, most lichens have bodies that are pretty contained, um, that are visible, um, and in many cases you can sort of see where it starts and ends. You could even draw a circle around the lichen, um, though in a place with a lot of lichens it can be hard to tell where one individual starts and stops. And there are some, also some lichen species that appear more dispersed with the thallus that's not as visible. Um, but for the most part, and most lichens that you're going to be identifying, it's this solid thing with a much more defined body than you might see with free living algae or other types of fungi. Um, so uh, it often has edges that you can see. Uh, so a lichen's body is a thallus. Great. A lichen thallus is generally made up of lobes, like this one here, uh, and those lobes may be tightly oppressed. That's with an A, not an O. Uh, pressed to the substrate or loosely oppressed. Um, or not attached at all. And when you look at a lichen, the first things you're going to consider if you want to identify what it is, is going to be what substrate it's growing on, uh, what shape is the lichen and its lobes, what growth form does it have, um, the shape and size of the lobes, um, which are measured widthwise at the widest part as that black arrow is showing, and the presence of any external features you can see on either side of it. Um, many of which we'll discuss today. And the lichen be, can be so closely attached to its substrate that it grows inside of it, or it can be attached by small structures uh, called rhizines or a central stock, or it might not be attached to anything at all. So as you may already know, lichens are made up primarily of a fungus, the mycobiont. A uh, fungus is about 80% or more of the body in most lichens. The other 20% or so is the photobiont, the photosynthetic partner, which is either green algae or cyanobacteria. And most lichens that you'll see, about 85% are green algal lichens, about 10% are cyanolichens, and a few percent contain both algae and cyanobacteria. Now, if you follow Science News, you might be saying right now, um, there's something else. And so from that, you may also know that many lichens also contain a yeast um, but you should know that, that is, a yeast is just a type of single-celled fungus. It is not the same kind of yeast we use to make bread um, that's in lichens. 
Um, and lichens actually have a lot of different types of tiny fungi and bacteria living in and on them, in addition to that news-making yeast. Um, but in turn, for our purposes, for identification, um, for the most part, these are, including the yeast, they're not naturally distinguishable to the eye, even with a good microscope. So for identification and anatomy, um, we're not really going to discuss those things further. So the generic structure of most lichens looks like this in this picture, this, um, this cross section. Um, so the upper cortex, it forms sort of the skin on the top of the lichen, that top layer, the upper cortex. Um, and then below that, there's a layer of photobiont cells, um, which here are sort of these bright green circles. Um, and then below that, there's a spongy layer of fungal tissue called the medulla. And then on many lichens, there's a, sort of a lower skin, a lower cortex. And most lichens you'll encounter are organized into these layers like this. We call this a stratified lichen. Um, but some lichens, like some crestose lichens and some cyanolichens, um, they're less organized. And below the upper cortex, the photobiont and fungal tissue are sort of all mixed up. And we'll see a picture of that in a little bit. And we call this unstratified. So as you may already know, lichens come in three main uh, growth forms uh, that we see here. So those are crestos, uh, folios, and fruticose, and that describes just sort of the shape of how they grow. And we'll go into three, those three main types and see what they look like. So crestos lichens, first up, are hard to collect, hard to study, and hard to identify relative to the other growth forms. Uh, but they are also absolutely everywhere, um, which makes them pretty darn cool. Uh, Crestos lichens are very tightly attached to their substrate, sometimes growing into the substrate, and are considered to be the most, quote, primitive growth form. I put that in quotes because it's not a great term to use um, as an evolutionary biologist since these lichens have been evolving just as long as the lichens with more complex structures. Um, but... The first lichens were probably crestose lichens, and they're typically the simplest in structure. Crestose lichens can be stratified, unstratified or stratified, but they usually only have an upper cortex, an algal layer, and a medulla, and no lower cortex. Most of the lichens you'll learn to identify in the Meet the Lichen series are foliose lichens. So foliose lichens are leaf-like, they're flattish with lobes, and they're attached to a substrate, usually with root-like structures, which are called rhizines, which we'll learn about in the second part of this lecture. And foliose lichens have a distinct upper and lower surface, upper and lower cortex, that are often different in color or different in texture or features present. They're distinct from one another. And the size of the lobes and the type of rhizines are often important identifying features for these lichens, as are the different colors or textures of that upper and lower cortex. Uh, foliose lichens can be tightly oppressed, that's sort of uh, pressed down uh, to the surface, almost like a crestus lichen, or they can be a lot more loosely attached. Uh, a lot of common foliose lichens have really small lobes, and they're called microfolios. And foliose lichens can be stratified, unstratified, or gelatinous, which we'll hear about shortly. And overall, they're very diverse and they're common in most environments that you will see. And here's a cross-section of what most foliose lichens look like inside. So this is a stratified foliose lichen. Uh, it's typically the one we use for just sort of a generic lichen structure, so it should look familiar, um, like the first one he showed at the beginning of this video. Um, but you can see those on the right there, those round algal cells, and then the sort of stringier fungal hyphae cells in the medulla. And most of the foliose lichens you'll see are like this inside. They are stratified. And in contrast, you can see in this cross-section, uh, this is a gelatinous foliose lichen. Sometimes we call them jelly lichens. Uh, and you can see that it is unstratified because there aren't these clear, neat layers inside um, where you have the photobiont just in one place. Here, the photobiont, which is cyanobacteria, they're spread sort of throughout this whole thallus. And gelatinous lichens are, as far as I know, all cyanolichens, meaning they have cyanobacteria as their photobiont. Um, though not all cyanolichens are, in turn, gelatinous. Uh, 
And you can see here the cyanobacteria, there's this more bluish green than the green algae in the other cross section we've seen. Um, and that sort of makes sense because an alternative name for cyanobacteria is blue-green algae, although they are in fact bacteria and not actually algae at all. And here's what those gelatinous unstratified lichens look like on the outside. They're usually dark in color, but when they're wet, they look sort of wet and squishy, kind of like jello. Um, they are some of the coolest lichens. Another special kind of foliose lichen uh, are the umbilicate lichens, which are attached to the substrate, uh, usually a rock, by this single central stalk underneath, uh, sort of like an umbilical cord. Uh, so that's uh, sort of why they have that name. Um, the, the most well-known one is called uh, appropriately umbilicaria. Okay, moving on, fruticose lichens are third major growth form. So these are the most three-dimensional growth, growth form being hair-like or shrubby or pendulous, and they'll have these rounded or flattened lobes. Um, and if they are flattened, the two sides are typically not distinct from one another like they are in foliocycons. And some fruticose species may sort of have this vertical and horizontal portion, like in this long photo here just below the text, uh, this is a uh, cladonia. Um, and in this case, you have this sort of erect stalk portion, which is called a podetium. The plural is podetia, is usually the word you hear. And then the horizontal portion is often, it can be crestose or it can be squamulus, um, a term we'll, we'll talk about in a second. But overall, the lichen is usually considered fruticose uh, if it has sort of these composite parts, including those, those stalks called podetia. So here's the cross section of the fruticose lichen. And you can see they look a little different, um, even though they have the same major parts. So in this, instead of the cortex being on the top and bottom, it just goes all the way around the outside. And then all the other layers are on the inside. Um, and some species are empty, but others have a central cord or axis. Um, like in Usnia, which is part of the Meet the Lichen series. So that would, that's where the letter A there is in this picture. So there's just a couple more uh, fairly important growth forms to know about too, uh, besides those big three. Uh, so here we have squamulose. So squamulose describes sort of this variant on the foliose form where the lobes are very small and overlapping, sort of like scales. And most often you'll see this sort of combined with those podetia we mentioned for a lichen that's actually grouped with the fruticose lichens, but you can also see it sort of on its own, um, like in these species like Sora here. And the last growth form I'll mention is sort of a real outlier. So these here are basidio lichens, which are in a whole different taxonomic group um, in addition to sort of being a growth form. Um, they're in the group with what we mostly think of as mushrooms. Um, and they have, like those, they have fruiting bodies that just sort of look like mushrooms. Um, and so these are, they're fairly rare, um, but they're pretty cool. Okay, so wrapping up this first part of the anatomy lecture, um, it's important to remember that these growth forms we talked about, uh, crustose, foliose, fruticose, um, they simply describe, in most cases, the shape that the lichen grows in. Um, it's not like a taxonomic group. So while many lichens in a particular taxonomic group might all share the same growth form, in other cases you might have a crustose and a foliose lichen that are closely related, or a single lichen that doesn't seem to fit neatly into either category. That is okay. There might not be a single right answer. Okay, so a quick review of the most important terms we just learned or reviewed. Um, it's not every term, but these are the ones you really should remember um, when you're starting to identify lichens. So thallus, mycobiont, photobiont, upper cortex, medulla, lower cortex, crustose, folios, fruticose. If you got an idea of what those mean, you are doing great. Okay. So I'll see you in part two, where we'll move on to the reproductive structures and other external lichen structures.